Hey, good morning to you and happy Monday. Uh, here we are. Uh, I, I don't know what your Monday is like for me. Uh, of course, I work from home. And so that um, I feel like whenever you get on here, you're always like, whoa, <laughs> you see your hair, your clothes. <laughs> it's all there. But anyways, I work from home. And so here we are. Good morning, Rebecca. <laughs> happy Monday. Uh, here we are another Monday and uh, maybe you're an essential worker maybe you're a non-essential worker I don't know but if you're not working it, it probably feels like another weekend Ashley it's so good to see you my love Mwah, lots of hugs and kisses to you uh, it's so interesting because I, I was really just reflecting with the Lord this morning how I could serve you through the word and through prayer and just really you know my heart is that these words just pierce your heart and soul and really fan the flame and so his word always speaks i really believe that anyways but i was just sitting with the lord and it's funny because what i had planned to share he really shifted actually and so i believe that he has something really cool for us today uh, over the weekend it's interesting because as some of you know, my husband is a worship leader. And so like most worship leaders right now, you know, you're connecting via Zoom or you're connecting Facebook Live or whatever you're doing. And so he had asked me over the weekend if I would be interested in recording with him for the Sunday morning service. And so I always love to get to do that and have those opportunities. And so he played this song that's just, it, it's one that he compiled. He, he put two songs together, actually, and it's called This Is My Story. Hey, Ashley, I miss you so much. Praying for you, girl. It's called This Is My Story. And at, at, as we were just, you know, in this spirit, just worshiping and praying, I really felt like uh, there, there's actually stones. This is actually my Ebenezer. It says believe in miracles. I'm going to share about this in a moment. But I believe there's Ebenezers in our life. And there's moments of our life that we remember. You know, we all celebrate these anniversaries. Like whether it's your wedding anniversary. Um, you know, our, our friend anniversary on, on social media. Like who can miss that? Our friend anniversary. Um, you know, we have all of these these moments that we celebrate together like hey do you remember when that happened do you remember when that happened and i was really reflecting on that this weekend and we're all in different different places you know um i have friends who are just in the fire i i have a good friend who just found out that her brother was murdered you know and there, there's so much going on, you know, loved ones are sick and there's just lots going on. And so maybe you stand on that side and you're just like, oh my word, like how am I going to get through this? You know, uh, I recall moments of my life, you know, again, I'll, I'll call them Ebenezer's. I recall moments of my life where my heart not my literal hurt, but my heart hurt so bad that I seriously was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it through. Like, I do not know if I'm going to make it through this moment. Um, I recall, you know, walking through divorce, having three small children, uh, not having a job and getting a phone call that my dad was in his final days of cancer all within just a month or so and my heart hurt so bad my friends literally would come to me and be like christy did you eat anything today and i'd be like well i i ate a banana i think i ate a banana you know it's like you don't you can't even think about food like it's that kind of grief like that kind of intensity and what i want you to do is i want you to think about your story and i want you to go back to those markers in your life where God came through in such amazing ways because he says that he's close to the brokenhearted and that he binds up all their wounds. And so we all have these Ebenezer moments and I call them Ebenezer because in the, the Bible they're actually referred to as altars. And so we, in the Old Testament, 
they always built an altar to remember. You know, Abraham built these altars to remember these moments with the Lord, to remember the moment that he sacrificed his son Isaac and laid them on the literal altar. These altars, these Ebenezers, you know, Bethel, where Jacob wrestled with God and he actually saw him. And so I don't know what side you're on, if you're on the side where you're walking and it is so heavy and it is so intense and you're literally like, I don't know if I can make it another day. Like seriously, I don't know. My heart hurts so bad. I don't know if I can go on. I challenge you today to think about those altars, to think about those Ebenezer moments of your life and how God came through for you in the past. And friend, he is going to come through for us again. He is going to come through. And so I was reading this morning as God just really diverted what I was going to say. So I, I believe this is significant for someone out of Joshua 3. It's really interesting because the Israelites, like they finally have this moment where they're crossing the Jordan. You know, they've wandered and wandered and wandered. They've complained. They lived on manna and quail and all of these things. They've been in the wilderness and they're, they're heading in, like they're crossing into the Jordan. And they have this moment where the Lord literally parts the water and the priests go first and they carry the ark across the Jordan. And it's really, really fascinating because as after they all cross over, you know, we're, we're in this crossing over season. We just went through Passover and the church globally, the big C church is crossing over. So we're crossing over in, in our life. And I really believe that. But this is what Joshua says. Um, the Lord said to Joshua in chapter four, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priest stood, and to carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, According to the number of tribes, that's why I have my stone today. What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So the stones literally act as a memorial, as a remembrance, like I want you to remember this day, and not only do I want you to remember this day, but I want your children to remember this day, and your children's children to remember this day, and your children's children's children, you know, pass it down through the generations, because the Lord your God moved in miraculous ways. He literally, for the second time in history, at least that's recorded, he literally parted the waters and you walked through, you know, the Red Sea, now the Jordan. This is amazing. This is an amazing moment. And you cannot forget what the Lord your God did for you. And so today, I really felt like this is a challenge. So so this rock, uh, I actually keep it right by my kitchen sink because I spend a lot of times, like if you're a mom, I spend a lot of time doing dishes, right? And so as I'm doing dishes by my kitchen sink, I see it all the time and it says, believe in miracles. And this actually goes back to, this, to a moment where uh, we moved from Texas and a really good friend of mine uh, gave that to me. She said, Christy, I picked this up for you. I believe you're headed to your promised land. And it was really cool because in the months following, I literally saw the hand of God move like I never have in my life. Lots and lots of miracles. And so I say to you today, friend, like, I don't know what you're going through. And maybe you're on the page where you need to look back in your story and go, you know what? He rescued me from the dominion of darkness. He called me forth into his marvelous light. Or maybe you're actually seeing the miracles right now. I'll tell you what, we have seen countless miracles on the Enkindle Watchmen Facebook group. It's this prayer group, hundreds of intercessors around the nation, and we have been praying for those with COVID-19 over and over and over, and it's so 
mind-blowing to me that every single person that has been prayed over in that group, we're not the only group praying for them, but every person that's come in has had a miraculous shift and turnaround and has not died. And so that to me is a celebration and a rejoicing of the miraculous power of God. He is amazing and he is good and there is great power in prayer. And I believe globally that this is an Ebenezer moment for the Church of America. We will not be the same. Like we will not be the same. I'm not saying it'll look different. I have no idea in the natural what it'll look like, but there has permanently been an imprint upon our heart. And I really believe that he is showing us miraculous things. He's doing miraculous things in our midst. And so what I want you to do is I want you, one, to recall in your story those Ebenezer moments of miraculous shifting and to remember those because those moments get us through to our next chapter sometimes when we need it. Secondly, remember this moment. Remember the miraculous things that God is doing. Remember the healing. Remember all of these things because they're great and they're good. And so let's just pray together as we close and start our week. So Father, I thank you so much, God, for every single listener. And God, I thank you that this serves as an Ebenezer moment in the Church of America, God, that that these are moments where we are seeing the hand of God like never before. We are seeing people come together in cities as one voice and one spirit. And branding doesn't even matter. It's just your church serving and rising up, serving those in need, giving food, distributing. And so, God, I thank you for this moment, God. And I ask we collectively come together. Would you agree with me? We come together for the church in cities, Father, to rise up. God, I ask that you would empower them with great boldness, Father. We pray for the strength of the laborers in cities across our nation, God. We pray for great dunamis power to be released. We pray, Father, that this would literally be, as we cross over as a church, that this would literally be Ebenezer's along the way. It's like I, I see the crossing over and it's like jumping from rock to rock. And so, God, I thank you for what you're doing in your church. And I pray for the greater things that you promised, Jesus, that we would do. And so in these moments, God, I ask that we would rise up in our cities with great boldness, with the power, authority, purity, and love that you have given us, God. I bless every single one. I ask for the greater things to come as you promised. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, it was it was great to join you today, this Monday morning. And listen, remember those Ebenezer, those moments in your life, you know, where God's hand moved and worked in miraculous ways. And I really believe, again, this is an Ebenezer moment. We're going to look back on this, and we are going to remember the great things, the, the mighty works, the healings that God has done in our midst. So I love you. I bless you. Have a great week.